Hi, my name is Scott DeLoach. I'm one of the golf professionals at Westover Golf Club in suburban Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I recently received a nice embroidered golf shirt in the mail. On one side of the shirt, it just simply has my name, and on the other side, it says the pro. Now, I don't know who sent that to me, but I wanna say thank you first of all. And I also wanna let you know that an encouraging word at the right time can go a long way. As I thought about this for a while, I realized that as we African-American golfers play and try to enjoy this game, we're constantly met with a lot of obstacles, distractions, uh, confusions, and a lot of discouragements as we try to enjoy this game just like everybody else. I can remember a few things that happened in my past that I want to tell you about. I, I can remember going to a, a golf tournament at a very nice private club and being the only African American there, I felt the pressure on my back as soon as I walked in the room. After having won, won the tournament, uh, I was instantly greeted with, you must have cheated because nobody else, not even the members played that good at this course today. I can remember being handed a dollar and being told to put my bag over there because they uh, mistook me for a caddy and not a player in the field. And one of my great memories was uh, playing in a 36 hole final club championship at the local course. I beat the boys so bad on the first 18 holes that between the first round and the second round, someone came out and said, we're gonna to have to disqualify you because we can't find your $5 entry fee application into the tournament. And recently at my home course, I shot a course record 63. And still to this day, the plaque in the pro shop that hangs, that uh, indicates the course record is still hanging says the course record is 64. So I've experienced a lot of things and I'm sure that many of you have experienced just as many. But the one thing that has kept me going are encouraging words along the way, like this shirt that I just received in the mail. So I wanna encourage everybody as we continue to play this game, as we continue to grow this game, as we continue to move on up the ranks, the one thing that we can all do is offer an encouraging word to that player that's trying to make it. It might be a tour player, it might be just your neighborhood uh, week, your, your uh, weekly match at the course, but every golfer needs an encouraging word or an encouraging act. It might be simple as buying somebody a shirt. It might be simple as uh, giving somebody a, a dozen golf balls they can't afford to buy the premium balls for themselves. It might be simple as inviting them to the club that you're now a member of that you couldn't even play on 20 or 30 years ago. It doesn't take much, but I believe that if we all offer encouraging words and, encourage, and do encouraging acts along the way, we can all help each other take our games to the next level. How we doing everyone? Andre Pillow, PGA professional and founder of DNA Golf Instruction. And as an African American PGA professional, I think it's important to share the history that we share within the game of golf. So please, take a little bit of your time to watch this quick video. George Franklin Grant is the inventor of the modern day golf tee. He received his patent on December 12, 1899, patent number 638920. He was a dentist by trade, and prior to his invention, golfers would have to tee up their ball on a pile of dirt. 
Grant was the second African American to graduate from the Harvard School of Dental Medicine and would later become the first African American faculty member at Harvard. In 1991, the U.S. Golf Association recognized Grant as the inventor of the modern day golf tee. Bill Spiller is considered by many to be the pioneer for change in regards to the PGA Tour. He would not allow racism to stop him from trying to compete. He picked up a golf club at the age of 29 and played for several years on the UGA, the U.S. Golf Tour, which allowed integration. Spiller was a winner, and there's stories of him winning in consecutive weeks and accumulating over 100 victories on the UGA and other integrated tours. In 1948, Spiller finished in the top 60 at the LA Open, which qualified him for an opportunity to play at the next PGA Tour event outside of Oakland at the Richmond Open. Spiller, Ted Rhodes, Madison Gunther, and a few others arrived ready to play at the Richmond Open. However, they were told that they could not compete because of the Caucasian Clause. Spiller was upset and decided to hire a lawyer and take legal action. To halt that legal action, the PGA of America made promises to integrate and to remove the clause, but they did not. Instead, they changed PGA Open events to PGA Invitational events at private country clubs in order to control the players in the field. Spiller never played on the PGA Tour, but was extremely instrumental in the removal of the Caucasian Clause in 1961. In 1961, Charlie Sifford became the first African American to earn his PGA Tour card. Sifford endured humiliation, threats to his life, and mistreatment by other professionals during his time on tour. He played on courses where he wasn't allowed in the clubhouse and couldn't eat in the restaurants. But that didn't stop him from competing, and it certainly didn't stop him from winning. He would go on to win four times on the PGA Tour. Long Beach Open, 1957, Puerto Rico Open, 1963, Greater Hartford Open, 1967, and the LA Open in 1969. He would also win twice on the Senior Tour, which is now known as the Champions Tour. In 1975, he won the PGA Senior Championship, and in 1980, he won the Sun Tree Classic. He has been honored by the PGA and was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame in 2004. And in 2014, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama. In 1963, Althea Gibson became the first African-American woman to play on the LPGA Tour. Known for her success as a professional tennis player, breaking the color barrier at the 1950 U.S. Open, and later becoming the first African-American woman to win a Grand Slam title at the 1956 French Open, she would go on to win five Grand Slam titles in tennis, along with six couples Grand Slam titles. Although she had some success as a golfer, she would eventually return to the tennis courts where she had the most skill. And in 1971, she was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. In 1967, Renee Powell became the second African-American woman to play on the LPGA Tour. In 2003, she received the First Lady of Golf Award from the PGA. Her father, William Powell, had what he called his crazy dream. You see, in the mid-1900s here in the United States, golf courses were segregated and there weren't a lot of opportunities for black people to play the game. So Mr. Powell decided to build his own golf course. In 1946, he opened Clearview Golf Club, a nine-hole facility that was open to all that could play. Ironically, this would be the place that Renee would learn the game of golf starting at the age of three, taking lessons from her father. Mr. Powell received well-deserved recognition from the PGA of America, receiving the Distinguished Service Award in 2009 and later being inducted into the PGA Hall of Fame in 2013. As you can see in this picture, I had the opportunity to play Clearview Golf Course as a young man, meeting both Renee and Mr. Powell. My parents thought it was important for me to see what black people created, even in times of segregation. And I thank Mr. Powell and Renee for being pioneers in the game of golf. Now, as a PGA professional, I have the opportunity to see Renee at annual meetings and at the PGA merchandise show. And it's always wonderful to talk to somebody 
who's created black history. In 1967, Lee Elder raised just enough money to attend Q School for the PGA Tour. He finished in ninth place out of 122 golfers and earned his tour card for that year. In 1975, Mr. Elder became the first African American to play in the Masters. And in 1979, he became the first African American to play on a Ryder Cup team representing the U.S. against England and Great Britain. He paved the way for a lot of young golfers such as myself and even Tiger Woods on tour. He never gave up on achieving his goals and had an excellent golf career. Calvin Pete was born on July 18, 1943 in Detroit, Michigan, and he was one of my favorite golfers to watch when I was young. He won 12 times on the PGA Tour, including the Players' Championship in 1985. He also played on two Ryder Cup teams, 1983 and 1985. A little known fact about Calvin Pete is that he did not graduate high school, but he earned his high school equivalency in 1982 to be eligible for that first Ryder Cup opportunity. To this day, he is known for being one of the straightest drivers of the golf ball and had the nickname of Mr. Accuracy. Because of him and Payne Stewart, I wore cane gold golf hats primarily throughout my high school career and even had the chance to see him play at the Buick Open. He showed us what it looked like to win on tour and I was very thankful to have the opportunity. In 1997, Tiger Woods became the first African American to win the Masters. Considered by many, including myself, to be the greatest golfer to ever play the game, he has over 106 worldwide victories. 82 victories on the PGA Tour, including 15 major wins. He shocked us all once again by winning the 2019 Masters. There was a time between 2000 and 2011 where Tiger Woods held all of the four major championships, the US Open, the British Open, the Players' Championship, and the Masters. It's called the Grand Slam, but we like to call it the Tiger Slam. So as you can see, there is a lot of black history within the history of golf. And I, for one, am very proud to continue that legacy and create my own black history for the next generation to follow. Amazing things were done, and it motivates me to be the best that I can be. And on days when I'm feeling like I can't go on or things are too tough, I remember Mr. Powell building a golf course in the middle of the 1950s. I remember the challenges that Charlie Sifford had. And that gets me motivated to try my best and to continue on moving forward, not just for myself, but for others. Thanks for watching. What's going on? Marcus Laster here from Drive and Flow Golf Lifestyle. Came to do a quick video for our Black Golf TV of what's, in, what's currently in my bag. So let's start with the putter. Right now I'm playing with the uh, Tour Model putter. It's a bit of an older uh, club. It's on a true tempered steel shaft with the uh, Golf Pride Pro only grip on it. Recently had that done. This one has been in my bag for a while. As far as wedges and the uh, irons go, I play with uh, Callaway's, Big Bertha's uh, from the mid to late 2000s. They're all in graphite shafts. As you can see, Big Bertha's still hit graphite shafts. They're all cavity back clubs. Uh, this is how I learned how to play golf. So that's why the current setup is still in my bag. As far as fairway uh, woods go, I play with uh, three wood, five wood by Warrior Custom Clubs. This is my five wood, has 21 degrees of loft on it. You get about 200 yards with these. It has the True Lunch Active Release Shaft by uh, Warrior Custom Clubs, also the Warrior Custom Clubs grip on it. These are pretty nice setup for um, for the dollar you spend on. They're not too expensive. And uh, as far as my driver goes, I get a lot of flack for this one. But this is, I play with the uh, Top Flight Gamer driver. Like I said, this driver works for me. It's on a standard 46 inch shaft uh, by Aldila NBS, as you can see. Uh, it's got 10.5 degrees of loft on it. It's a pretty light club. 
Uh, he can get about 215 to 220 yards on it. So uh, that's my current setup in my bag is what works for me right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So check out um, Black Golf TV and Drive and Flow Golf Lifestyle. Until next time, peace. yesterday and I saw that there was a post saying if Cameron Champ won the PGA Championships what that would do for black golf wow at some point we gotta stop drinking the Kool-Aid man um, first things first let, let's look at Cameron Champ as as an individual why does he have to win to do something for black golf the fact that he has made it to the PGA Tour that should be enough for black golf well, it's enough for y'all with Tiger, so. But let's look at his his body of work. Cameron Champ has done so much in this community. He is open about his blackness. He is open about the struggles that his grandfather had to go through through the course of trying to play this game, coming home as a soldier. And he's also been open about the person who helped him with this game and some of the struggles that his family has had and some of the, I guess, biases that they've had to face. That alone should be well enough for black golf. The fact that he stands up for black people, he stands up for us. He's not ashamed of being black or the fact that he has actually tried to host a tournament for the black youth, which obviously was canceled due to COVID, postponed due to COVID. And they're gonna go back and do it again. Him winning a major or not, should not do anything for black golf. That is the problem with us as black people. We don't celebrate our own champions. It's almost like getting there is not good enough. I could see if we had, if it was the NBA or football where we're 80% of the player population, we're less than 1%. No one says when Colin Morikawa wins the PGA championships as he did yesterday, oh, how much is he going to do for Asian golf? And what is he gonna do for the Asian culture? You know why? Because Asians are accepted. Because everybody is okay with them. Black people as a whole, we feel like we still have to allow them to validate us. And that's where drinking the Kool-Aid or us not holding the standard high really honestly breaks my heart to the fullest. We post and we tag it and we, oh yeah, we're cheering for Cameron and blah, 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 blah. What? Now you cheering for Cameron? Because he's, he's on the leaderboard on the last day? Really? If y'all go on PGATour.com, there's a few things that y'all should have already logged in every day. Every time, every Thursday through Sunday, you should already have these settings down. You should have Joseph Bramlett. You should have Harold Varner. You should have Cameron Champ. And I guess if you want, Tiger Woods. The four black people on the tour are blackish black issues meaning tiger um and they should have your support every week because out of 154 164 i mean play every week at best we're gonna have four if they're all in the field more than likely uh and depending on the conditional status joseph's between the corn Ferry tour and between the pga tour a couple weeks ago i think it was the second week of the restart bramlett was on 59 watch what, what is that gonna do for black golf? Joseph Bramlett shoots 59. Does that change black golf? Does that move black golf? No. Does it help? Uh, maybe, I don't know. At some point we have to start holding ourselves and start saying we create the narrative. Stop allowing them to create the narrative. Okay, what up dog? Black people as a whole, we have to hold ourselves at a higher standard. By holding ourselves at a higher standard, then we force everyone else to be at a higher standard as well. We can no longer allow these people like the PGA of America to write the narrative and say that, you know, oh, Cameron Champ's going to change black golf or these BS PSAs that they did during the PGA championships. Um, 
first problem with these PSAs, think about it this way. I had a long talk at the panel discussion in front of everybody, talking with USGA was there, PGA was there, LPGA was there, um, AJGA was there, Golf Channel was there. And I talked about the lack of respect given to us and how we are not included in the diversity and inclusion. Black people, not minorities, to help with minorities, black people. Um, and this was the end of January. Lo and behold, here we come with February. Ain't no mention of Black History Month. Ain't no mention of Ted Rose, Charlie Sifford, you know, Joe Lewis. I can go down the list of them. Lee Elder, blah, 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 blah. None. Doc Blade from Doc Blade's Forensic Golf. Hey, I had a client of mine that was responding to one of my blogs. If you didn't know, I do a blog every day. For the past two plus five years, I do a blog every morning. It's on my um, Facebook page, Doc Blade's Forensic Golf. It's on my website, www.forensicgolfinstruction.com. It's on my Instagram. So I do a daily blog. But one of um, my client, Cage, asked me about the, the blog I just did when I said that one of the things I hate to hear in golf instruction is just hit the ball. It's one of the worst things personally that I can think you could tell somebody. And you hear it all the time when the buddies are out there playing with each other. And sometimes you hear a golf instructor say hit the ball. Now we know that hitting the ball is what we have to do when a stick and ball sport, right? But trying to tell somebody just to hit the ball and think that's going to be an adjustment or help them out, you're asking for huge problems. Because what it does is create the hit impulse. Check this out. For all these years, <coughs> golf instructors have really led many, many, many clients astray. I'm not going to say all golf instructors, but many have. The client has done exactly what they asked them to do, hit the ball. But guess what happens? When you just tell somebody to hit the ball and that's what they do, most people think the job is over. They give up and they're done. They hit pushes, they hit slices, they hit pulls because they're just thinking about hitting the ball. There's so many good things that happen anecdotally throughout the swing when we swing through a balanced finish. That's why I like to use a dynamic swinging motion. Hit the ball creates tension, stress, tightens the muscles up, it tightens the shoulder girdle up, it tightens the hip up, the pelvic girdle so it's not rotating naturally because you into that hit impulse. But when you have a dynamic swing in motion, look at the difference. All of it works and it supinates, the foreign supinates. You create more club head speed. You remove the tension from your swing, which is a swing record. That's why I like to tell people, if I stand behind you, I should be able to count the spikes on your shoes. And no matter what you do, have the courage to look at your ball for three seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. The Ted Rose drill. Look at my play roost, my playlist, and look for the Ted Rose drill. So hey, this is what I like to tell people again. Get away from hit the ball and get more into swinging the soul. I would like to say people say swing the soul of the club. When you swing the soul of the club, you're creating a lot of club head speed and you're gonna actually throw the bejesus out of it. I'd rather have somebody throwing the bejesus out of it, fully releasing the club get the benefit of the shaft technology and playing better golf. So hey Cage and anybody else who's out there with a hit impulse, I hope this helps you out. Nice ball. Swing the sole of the club, a dynamic swing in motion. Hey guys, get that speed out front, trust the process, and keep grinding. Check out, check out the webpage, www.forensicgolfinstruction.com. Take care.
189 yards, number 17 at Smoke Rise Country Club. This is gonna be like hoops. We brought out the squad. First up, we got my man John from Take Pride Golf Supplies. We got my man Chris from Double Dog Leg Golf. We got my man's Manila Slice Insta Golfer. We got my man Reggie, aka Bruh Man from the Fifth Flow. We got my man Byron Chamberlain, two time Super Bowl champion. Don't tackle me out here, all this gravity. <laughs> we got Party D in the house. We got my man, Dom, full of love. There you go. Full of love. My man, Kodak, hacking the building. <laughs> and you know the bogey bees out here. So we gonna flip the T to see who gets to pick first. I hope I'm first, Captain. All right, we flipping the T to see who goes first. Bogey Small is first, Captain. Hey, congratulations. Who's your first pick? You know who I'm picking. Kodak, <laughs> hack, baby. That's what's up, my man. I'm going with Byron, Byron uh, Chamberlain because he's the biggest dude out here. First yeah. round yeah. Long driver. I need 65 million guaranteed. Uh, we'll work on good pick. Not Kodak, gonna Kodak. lie. You own the golf supply. All right, said, since John owns a golf supply <laughs> shop, <laughs> he must be good. We got John. Let's go. Yeah, that wasn't a whisper, uh, Kodak. Yes. <laughs> Who y'all yeah. picking? I'm going with Party D. Man, I know she's going to come through for Team 2 Putt. You know what? I was going to pick Party next. Party gets to play from the front tees. You lose. All right, Kodak. Who we got? Who we got? All right, we taking Bruh Man. Bruh Man on the squad. I have that today. I have that today. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> got to get my man here, the only one with pants on today, Manila Slice. He got the pants on because he's a pro. Let's get him. Right, double, dog double dog leg. Double dog leg. Okay. Who's last? Who's last? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm on this squad, huh? Now you that. Now you on that squad. Hey, you got that are. right. <laughs> That's hilarious. I think first captain should have to tee off first. Party to tee off first. So you guys are teeing off. Yeah. Team, <laughs> team two PZ in the box. We got party teeing up from the front real quick. Thanks for setting this up, man. I'm honored to be out here. Oh man, that's my man's yeah. Manila Slice. You know we couldn't do it without you, baby. Hey. <laughs> right on. Look how far up these red tees are. I should have picked Party D. You doing best ball? No. Oh. It's every shot counts. We will tally up the scores at the end. Whichever team has the least amount of strokes wins. Got you. All strokes matter. All right. Can't drive this green, but I'm gonna try. Put it out there, Party. We are playing a one hole match. We are the first to tee off on this first hole at Rancho Del Sol. It's 440 yards from the whites with bunkers surrounding the green and a lake protecting the backside. Let's get it. Oh man. Oof. Oh my goodness. Oh, you guys are in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that kick back. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. The princess is in the house. Look at these views. Rancho Del Sol. Shouts out. Too peasy. You going second? Yep, it's only right, you know what I mean? Okay. What do you think about that practice swing, though? 
It don't look like Kodak, that's for sure. Oh, wow! My man, two peas. You're flying, huh? You're flying, huh? Make him say wow on the first hole. Show a lot of bogey bees do it. Who wants to follow that? You're up, baby, let's go. That was scary. <laughs> and the boss man himself. First swing of the day. No warm ups. Good thing this is not best ball. They'd all be playing from two putts. Oh, all right. That's up. That's straight hey, though. It's in play. up now. Tell me, do you really wanna? Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Good play. Manila slice. What is that? A five wood? Oh, he does not hit driver because he's smart and he's got skills. You can't tell. Manila slice in the box. Oh. <laughs> That's no. out there. Turn. Go <laughs> last but not least, <laughs> our last round draft pick. <laughs> Mayor Goldie. If anybody has seen Back to the Future, you know this guy, all right? He was the only black character in the movie. I'm with man, but I appreciate the hype. No, no. <laughs> I don't remember nobody else but you. Oh my god, and that's why he was the only black character. He He's on your team. Oh my goodness. Team two putt. There it is. It's safe. As the day goes on, this is gonna get so good. <laughs> we will make our way over to Dom's ball. Second swing of the day. I'm not gonna get too upset just yet. There we go. That's a good idea. Hey. Okay, Dom. He redeems himself yeah, big go. time, and he's out there. Hey man, Stop, I'm sorry for picking you last, man. <laughs> DC in the middle of the fairway. Okay, that's down there. To the right. Chipping a putt from there. What's going on? You out here to talk mess to these guys while they hit? I don't think I'll do talk. <laughs> Manila Slice made it onto the fairway. Put this on the green, big man. Wait a minute, you're not on my squad. <laughs> Okay. It's good. Okay. It's right next to the green. Work. Good shot. Manila Slice came to play for Team 2 Peasy, baby. Everybody from Team 2 Peasy is playing today. Is that party D? Present. Out further than 2 Peasy? Wow. Who would have thunk that party D would put it out there further than 2 Peasy? I would have thought it. <laughs> oh man, straight shot. Get up there. Get up there. Oh, is that short? Way short. All right, let's get it. Nobody else on your squad is on the green. That's fine. Why is the whole squad? Turn. And neither is party. Oh. Didn't lose it. There's the green. Nobody's on it. Okay. Uh oh. Yeah. Little right. Is it a little long also? No. Is it trapping? No, I'm right in the front. That'll work. And still, nobody from Team Two Put is on the green. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, we made it up to the green, but nobody's on it. Manila Slice just off the front of the green. Too peasy. Just off the front of the green. Party D in the rough. <laughs> And who's that in the bunker? I'm looking at it. And did BC find his ball? We're in Chamberlain. Uh oh. And that's in the water. Oh, Jesus. Uh oh. Don't worry about it. I was just trying to hang out with Don. Love you for that. And he's out of the bunker onto the green. First one on the green. Too peasy. Little long, but he's on the green. Let me see what you got, Slice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, with the bump and run, Manila Slice. He's close. Big BC after the drop is putting. Be the best thing for me. Oh yeah. Looks like he's gonna be the first one in the hole. <laughs> Two putt Shakur from the back of the green. 
slow down. Slow down. Too peasy. A little long. Bogey territory. Decent putt. He's got a three footer. They got the hole surrounded, y'all. Finally. <laughs> Party D wants to sink this putt to help out the squad. Get in there. Oh, another good putt. Oh. Manila slice. Is that a poke? Bogey in the bag. That's a bogey? That's a bogey, bro. Wow. I'm not mad at it. Let me, <laughs> let me follow suit though. A bogey in this challenge probably isn't bad. You've got to hit this like before you. You're better than that, you know it. <sighs> what did I teach you? I'll take the double. Too peasy with a double. And that's a double bogey. And one on. Last pick, but not the last in the hole. <laughs> Big BC. What'd you end up with there, Bob? Double bubble. Wow. <laughs> and Party D to finish it off for the squad. And there it is. And there it is. What'd you get, Party? A double. Except Manila Slice. I think we can handle that. What do you think, fam? You think Team Bogey Smalls can handle that? I don't think you guys have a chance. Wow. The green is for only putters. Yeah. Only that? Yeah, no. No, only these. Alright, go hit yours, Kevin. This one? Yeah, hit it to the hole. No, hit it right here. Go. Oh, there you go. Not bad, not bad. There you go. Good. Good shot. Look at that. 